I have a calling, I, I suspect, uh, when uh, I started school with the brothers in, a, in one of their, at Mount St. Charles in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. And uh, I was in very impressed with the brothers that were there. And uh, <clears throat> without thinking of a career at, at any time, because I was probably uh, 15 or 16 years old then. And uh, the, uh, strangely enough, a, a brother approached me and says, did you ever think of becoming, what, what, you, what do you think your career would be? I said, I haven't been thinking about it at very well. He says, have you ever thought of being a religious? Well, no, I haven't. But um, then in conversation continued with a, without going in that same same line and <clears throat> but the thought the seed was there and two or three weeks later I, I spoke to the same brother because I admired him very much and uh, I said well what do I have to do if I'm interested well he said you can come to uh, to, to come with us We're go we have sort of a a, a, a little place where you, you, you can stay a week, for example, and th think what you would like to do if you if you like to join. So I did. And <clears throat> after one week, I said, well, I think this, this is for me. And what did your parents think about My that? My parents at first objected uh, quite strongly. They said, well, why your brother? If you want to be a religious, why don't you become a priest? Well, I said, not necessarily a priest because I want to be a teacher and I want to be the teacher like these teachers because they're, they're wonderful and uh, they supported me and they said well whatever you you think is right uh, you, you go, 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 go on okay. I had been teaching three years in America after my training and uh, we always have every year we have a, a private talk with our superior and um, he said, well, uh, the superior told me, would you be interested in uh, coming, uh, going to England because we're going to do a new foundation there? And uh, I said, well, yes, uh, perhaps I'd be, could I think about it? He said, he said to me, oh, well, I'm giving you a week to think about it because I have to make decisions about who I'm going to send. And we're sending four brothers there and St. Albans in, in, in England. And uh, says, well, after I spoke to my parents about it, and I spoke to my, my confreres about it, and uh, well, uh, of course, uh, they had already made a, a sacrifice, sending, allowing me to, to become a, a brother. And they said, well, well, you know, it's going to be very far away. <laughs> she says, but again, th they were supportive and said, if, you're, if the brothers want to send you there, they have a good intention to do that, and probably it's a good thing for you. And uh, it's an adventure, and it was an adventure. So that's how come I was part of the four brothers that came, the youngest of the four. And what was the main subject that you taught? Well, it's not really a main subject because I had the whole of the prep school together in four different groups. So uh, I, ha I had the, the, the beginning, the beginners, and then I separated them to four, and it was... Uh, a wonderful opportunity to get to know the boys, and they were so innocent in that t at that time that they they initiated me as much as I initiated them in all the subjects, uh, despite the fact that I had very hard time in uh, doing maths for them because I used to go to get some help in, in that direction uh, with the, the nuns in the in the in, in St Albans in Loreto College, for example. Uh, I used to go two or three lessons there before I could teach over here. So, but uh, it worked out very well. It did. And what were the challenges of running a school in the 50s? Well, of course, it was a great challenge for us being American. So we had an American system in our blood. And of course, we had to initiate ourselves to what was going on in this country. But we had the wonderful support of the parents. We had the wonder, and the children took to us which was a, a, a surprise and a delight. Yeah. So uh, the uh, it worked out very well, I thought. And what is your most cherished memory of your time as headmaster? My, 
Well, can I tell you a long story? You can. I think my most cherished time has been an, oca an occasion uh, when uh, a lad, some lads were doing something very wrong and it was reported to me by a neighbour which is here in St Albans uh, on their way home from four at four o'clock in the evening, they had um, they used to knock at the doors of people uh, on Holywell Hill, at the bottom of Holywell Hill, and <clears throat> these boys would knock at the door and sometimes push the door open. Uh, strangely enough, because um, there was a very invalid lady uh, living in one of those, and she would keep the latch off the door so that the neighbors could come and help her because she was she couldn't move around very well and I, so I decided to uh, get appoint some prefects to come and take a wa to, to, to watch what was going on and uh, so, but of course the, the children were they, they, they were very careful about that if they saw a prefect around they didn't do this and but so I decided to go and asked Mrs. Her name was Mrs. Garside. I'll always remember it. And uh, I went to to see, speak to her, and I said, "Well, I'm very sorry that our boys are doing this silly thing, and they they're not aware what's going on. And uh, would you allow me to come uh, ahead of time and and see what what's going to happen?" And she she welcomed me. And so I went one day. And the, the fact is that uh, that first day, for some reason, nobody knocked. But I persevered. I went a second day, and the second day I hit the jackpot. I, I, I opened the door. Who do I see? A boy called Brendan. I said, what are you doing here now? Come in. We said, I was just choking. I said, do you realize what you were doing? This poor lady here, in the winter, this was Christmas, you know, during December, and, and the, this poor lady, lady here can't get up to shut the door, and she's getting cold and things like that. I said, tomorrow morning, I want you to come to the office. So you, you can imagine, he walked in with a, very apologetic, and he said, well, I said, what are we going to do about this? Well, he said, "I don't know. I'm going to go. I'm going to write a letter, and uh, also I'm going to probably go to to see her and apologize." And well, I said, "That's not good enough. What else are you going to do?" Well, it was Christmas time, and we always prepared uh, Christmas hampers at that time. So I said, "I prepare a hamper for her." So that's what he did. And the, the Mrs. Garside was so pleased, and she uh, got in touch with me and to say thank you. And she said, "the the boy has been wonderful." And uh, so, uh, four or five years later, this boy here was now in the sixth form. And he got, he got in touch with me, saying, um, "Mrs. Garside has died." So I was surprised. I said, have you been in touch with Mrs. Garside? He said, yes. He said, I continued to bring her a Christmas hamper. I was very moved. We went to the funeral together. And are you still in contact with any old Columbans, Brother Clement? Oh, yes. Well, my work is in, very much involved with old Columbans, uh, the present students and the former students. Um, because uh, every time, every occasion we have to gather people together from former, because they're peppered all over the world, and they like when they revisit the, the college, which is quite, quite often, uh, they they like to see their records, and I have them all here. So uh, some of them will say, "Can I come back and take a look at you know what what uh, what I was like and my, all my friends and things like that." So it's it's been a great joy to see them, and of course, the, particularly the the, the the first ones that I had, uh, which is uh, 1955. Can you imagine? They get, they're all men now. Some of them are re retired as well. Uh, so it's it's a great joy to see them, and, it, uh, and they they've been very very warm, and uh, they're peppered all over the world. Of course. And uh, how often do you get back to the USA? And do you still have family there? 
Oh yes, I have a, n a number of families there because I had three brothers and uh, I was the youngest of the family and so I had a, a number and they all married and they had children and children's children so forth. So we're on to the fifth, <laughs> fifth generation now, which is a, a, a joy. But uh, I find the journey uh, very burdensome now and uh, some of my nephews and grand nephews and grand nieces and so forth they say we'll come to you if you don't come to us uh -huh. so uh, i'm expecting uh, a, a grand nephew to come to me uh, uh, at christmas time this year and uh, tell me brother Kevin, have you ever had a religious experience difficult question uh, i suppose my life is religious experience because I live in a community of brothers and we support one another and we, we every day we start the day with a, a prayer uh, and of course uh, we share uh, whatever the, the college represents we, we, sh we share our experiences and so forth so uh, and, uh, and, and we end the day also with, with prayer so that uh, I would say that the religious experience is a daily one. Lovely. And um, explain to us a little of what you do in archives. I try to keep all the records I possibly can. Uh, I, and I, I had the great pleasure of this being given me to, move, to, to expand because all this here was in various four or five different rooms and when we had the new extension, I was given the opportunity uh, because this was supposed to be a sort of a storeroom that became a junk room practically. And uh, so the, we had some shelves put up and I was able to bring everything together. And it took about eight months to get it sorted out. But now I think I'm well ahead of the game.